Which mm -hmm. do you prefer, thrust stage, proscenium stage? I love them all. In the round? I love them all. They have very different qualities. And I've had the great pleasure, you know, Miles um, uh, Potter, for those who haven't heard the full name. Um, husband? We, husband, collaborator. My, my greatest collaborator, collaborator, actually. I've done more plays with Miles than anyone. And uh, that feels like true collaboration. That's joy to me, working with Miles. Um, on many different projects. But we've had the great pleasure to take a show that was in the Tom Patterson, which is the elongated three-sided thrust, and put it on a proscenium. We took Orpheus Descending and Medea and put those on the proscenium um, with, um, uh, with the Mervishes, at the Royal Alex, and then at the Canon, which is now the Mervish Theater. So you've described going into a room with a new director, listening and trying to find how that creative relationship worked. Could you describe the long-term creative relationship you have with Miles, where yeah. you know each other so well? Yeah. How does that work when you start working on a play? Uh, well, it's changed over the years. When I, f I first met him when he was directing a play, I replaced a woman who had dropped out of a play at Blythe. And the year before, I had learned the year before at Blythe, my shows were finished and I came back to visit and I was seeing uh, a, s a show. I was eating pie in the Swillage restaurant, the Will Village restaurant, and Sam Malkin and Lane Coleman said, Shauna, Shauna, come with me. Uh, Karen is ill. And this actress in the Donnellys was ill. And they were going to take her to the hospital uh, at intermission. So I went on in the second act. I'd seen the play once. I was a quick study, <laughs> and I put the lines that I knew I'd come from that side. I put the lines for one scene. I ran on, did the scene. Ex I knew I exited there, and I picked the lines there, and I went on. It was small parts in the second act. But at dinner, they Wait a minute. This is the Miles that you saw on the farm show and said, who's that no, guy? No, he wasn't in that show. This is, this is not the, this is not the, that isn't even the show. This oh, is okay. the Donnelly's, the death but of the Miles Donnelly's. But Miles is directing, right? No. Oh, okay, He was sorry. directing the next year. But Janet Amos, who was artistic director the next year, knew that I was a quick study because I had learned these lines and that, and that, and, in, and, and at the dinner break, I learned a step dance and went on for the whole show. And I got my equity card that way. I was in the past my death of the Donnellys. At, I replaced Karen Weems. I'd like to point this out. The boldness and brashness and bravura of Shauna, who else would do that? <laughs> I was I mean, game, that's all. And I thought, and then halfway through, I'm sitting there going, I'm pulling off David Fox's boot. Oh my gosh. And I'm acting with Janet Amos. You know, I'd already acted with Anne Anglin. These were heroes from the farm show. And I was so amazed to see these, you know, women being farmers and telling stories that were so powerful and moving to me. And, and they were brawless, and it was the 70s, and that they were no makeup. And I thought, wow, this is a different theater than the MAME I saw at the O'Keeffe Center when I was a kid. And, you know. So there, there I was on stage with them. I remember this, there was no dressing rooms then. We were in a trailer or a house two doors down. And I remember running across the field, hearing the fiddle music in my period, you know, 1880s skirt and boots and running to make, uh, you know, the first entrance and running. And I look up and there's a full moon. And I thought, yes, this is life in the theater. It was great. It was great. So Janet Amos knew I was a quick study. So the next year, when this actress dropped out, the greatest recommendation was, she's good at learning lines. <laughs> <laughs> so I met Miles, and I was in, uh, I was in his uh, Saint Sam and the Nukes, read, written by Ted Jones. How you start a project with someone like Miles, how is that different than walking into the rehearsal hall with a director you've never met? Well, and I've had great great times with directors I've never met. You know, Thomas Moskopoulos, who did uh, Electra, he's great, worked a different way, didn't read the play for four weeks. <laughs> but with Miles, usually we had started ages ago. I mean, we thought about Richard four years before we did it. I think one day I came out of the shower and I looked, he said, God, you look like Olivier and Richard III. He was like, yeah. And, and also, um, I had been offered a Hamlet uh, when they were, Richard wanted to do six Hamlets, two women, four men. And I had so many questions, like, well, at that point, I think I was 40, something, I said, who's going to play my mother? Is it Joyce Campion, <laughs> bless her, you know, because 
I, it was age more than anything. It wasn't man, female. But also, I didn't feel I could transform myself physically into a virile young man grieving for his father. Richard III, I, th I said, though. Richard III, on the other hand, I remember this conversation thinking, that's, that's. Possible so this me. is the back and forth with Miles. Back and forth, yeah, back and forth with Miles. We th we thought Richard III. We talk about it, and and there's um, we love Tennessee Williams. We love doing Tennessee Williams. We did we've done Streetcar and Glass Menagerie and Orpheus Descending and uh, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof twice, and so uh, that's a special place for us, a world. Um, but I've done Dancing at Luna, so many plays with Miles, and. Um, also new plays with him, you know, uh, that require dramaturgy because he's an extraordinary dramaturg. You know, he was the original dramaturg on Draw Our Boy and he was the original dramaturg with Proud and Bev Cooper's um, Innocence Lost and If Truth Be Told. And um, that comes from his starts as a collective cre creator. Well, it might, might it be accurate to call it long form directing? We talked about long form language, long mm. form thought, mm. and working with Miles, you have like a long yes. form directing. Yes, and he, he, he knows that, I mean, you know what he'll do? He'll give me a note on the like first week and I'll go, oh, note or something. Three weeks later, I'll go, you know, I was thinking, <laughs> and I've learned to trust, and he's learned to trust that I might go, you know, when we did uh, Taming of the Shrew, his spaghetti western Taming of the Shrew, which I still think is one of the best ones. Well, I was in it, I never saw it really. But it felt great because those, and he did it because the archetypes in Commedia are so relatable in the western, the spaghetti western. We identify, we, we have a shorthand. We identify the kind rancher or the big rancher. We identify the good store owner, the sidekick, you know, the wild cat. Uh, you know, the, the firebrand who's not like her feminine, you know, Victorian sister. Uh, it's, you know, Maureen O'Hara and John Wayne, you know, all these things. And so I remember he said, the first thing I want you to, he had this idea for the last image, which was me kneeling, but him stopping me, and then me waiting for him to lift me up. So that, because his whole idea about true was that it's a waltz, it's a dance, but one person always has to lead at one time in order for it to function. It changes, it changes, like any relationship, it changes. <coughs> and that, that these were two outlaws, basically, who understood the pain of being the other, and they found that in each other. And as Trudeau would say, the old Trudeau, <laughs> you know, what goes on in bedrooms is nobody's business. But you should want to be in theirs as the, at the end of the play, because you know that's going to be great. And so he gave me a note the first week about this ending, and I said, uh, well, three weeks later, there I was going, yeah, I think that's a really good idea. So it's long form directing, but it's also trust on another level that you don't have with the directors you're getting to know. Right? Yes, trust, or that I feel his trust in me. I feel, and I feel able to say, what about this, or what about that? The hard part about being in a room with Miles directing um, is, uh, is uh, if I see another actor being an asshole, then that's hard for me, because I just sit there and watch it. You know, and I go, why are you being such a, why are you saying such a rude thing? Or why are you being so... Sorry, an asshole to Miles' directions or just an asshole just, to the cast? Yeah just, yeah, just an asshole. Or just, you know, saying, well, I'm not going to do that. Or, well, that's a stupid idea. Or, and you go... Because I think there is a, you know, there is a... Because then that's, that's the wife going... That's me saying... That's not acceptable. That's that girl saying, that's not acceptable. And do you, or do you? It depends how well I know the person. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But Miles sees it all. I mean, having directed. Miles sees it all, but Miles is much more patient than I am. He's a very patient, good director, and he likes actors, and he, and I do too, but he's much more patient. I love actors, actually. I think it's a great tribe to be part of. Um, but. Uh, he has the patience to go, oh, they will get there in a week, or they need to do that now, or that's what happens, it's a theater. He doesn't take it personally, which is why I like working with him, you know.